sharing with you one of my favorite winter books today. I love this book. It's called Owl Moon. And as you can see, this gold sticker, it's a Caldecott Award winner. And every year they award Caldecott, um, the Caldecott Award to books with ex um, extraordinary illustrations um, for picture books and children's books. So that's always a good sign to see a Caldecott Award. This book came out in 87. And so I'm guessing it won the award in 87 or 88. It's a phenomenal book. You're gonna love this one. Um, it's got fantastic language and vocabulary words and the way she uses it, you feel like you're there with her. So I think you're gonna like this book. Um, Owl Moon by Jane Yolen, illustrated by John Schoenair. Sean Air. I am getting that guy's name wrong and I feel really bad about it but I don't know how to pronounce that. Sorry, John, about getting your name wrong. Mm. It's a hard word for me, and I don't know how to pronounce that. I wanted to show you the title page. Owl Moon by Jane Yolen, illustrated by John Schoener. And look, it gives you a little clue about what do you think is gonna happen in this book. I love the little clues the illustrator gives us. I'm ready, are you? It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind. The trees stood still as giant statues, and the moon was so bright that the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blew, long and low like a sad, sad song. Does this book take place in the country or in the city? Hmm. They don't live where I live. They've got lots of snow, huh? Maybe that's why I like this book. I could hear it through the woolen cap Pa had pulled down over, over my ears. A farm dog answered the train. Then a second dog joined in. They sang out, train and dogs, for a real long time. And when their voices faded away, it was quiet as a dream when we walked on toward the woods, Pa and I. They said they were gonna go owling. I wonder what that is. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow and little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up and my short round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out, if you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. I have been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. Do you see their shadows and their footprints? We watched, I'm oh, sorry, we reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky, and Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up as if searching the stars, as if reading a map up there. The moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called, ooh, ooh, ooh. The sound of a great horned owl. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Again, he called out. And then again, after each call, he was silent. And for a moment, we both listened, but there was no answer. Pa shrugged, I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers all said, sometimes there's an owl and sometimes there isn't. If you look close in the pictures, you see little surprises it's so quiet, they don't hear anything, but there's little creatures in the woods. 
Do you think you're going to find an owl? We walked on. I could feel the cold as if someone's icy hand was palmed down on my back. And my nose and the tops of my cheeks felt cold and hot at the same time. But I never said a word. If you go owling, you have to be quiet and make your own heat. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I have ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry for the scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hid behind the black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. I sighed and Pa held up his hand at the sound. I put my mittens over the scarf, over my mouth, and listened hard. And then Pa called. I listened and looked so hard, my ears hurt and my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again, but before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading its way through the trees. Pa almost smiled, then he called back. Just as if he and the owl were talking about supper, or about the woods, or the moon, or the cold, I took my mitten off the scarf off my mouth, and I almost smiled too. Did the owl answer back? The owl's call came closer from high up in the trees on the edge of the meadow. Nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with the heat in our mouths and the heat of all those words we had not spoken. The shadow hooted again. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a branch. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at each other. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without a sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew then I could talk. I could even laugh out loud, but I was a shadow as we walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Pa says, the kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining owl moon. Did you like that story? I hope you did. It's one of my favorites. Um, if you want to learn more about the great horned owl, I want you to tell me, see if you can figure out why it's called a horned owl. Do those owls really have horns? Hmm. And um, there's some information you can find um, at um, National Geographic has a kid section. You could find some. 
Um, I know the San Diego Zoo has a little section. Or if you're like me, you could go to the library because we go to the library all the time. And maybe you can find a book that you could tell me about, about owls. Well, I hope you like it. And maybe one day we can go somewhere where there's woods and maybe you and I could go owling. Wouldn't that be fun? I'll see you next time.